We're going to start, but just tell, make sure you tell me when it's 8 o'clock. Um, the movie last night, or not the movie, but... How many, before you, you give me the bullshit, does anybody in this fucking room think that they, they could relate to that person as a human being? Not even close, right? No. I rest my case. <laughs> That's why you're here. Although we have had uh, uh, super high alpha male guys like Steve come to the seminar. Um, we're talking about Steve Ballmer, the former CEO of uh, Microsoft, who um, spoke at Oxford. He said he was nervous, right? He said he was nervous because, and uh, he's he's, he's uh, quote been quoted uh, subsequent to that that he knew that uh, it was gonna you know this was gonna be on YouTube or wherever forever time uh, forever, and um, the um, but well, I mean what what did he sound like? What's the takeaway of uh, Steve? Yeah. Passionate, yeah, go ahead. Dan. Extremely energetic, enthusiastic, and passionate. Just the opposite of you guys. Vision. Yeah, just still just the opposite. Well, a couple of you got some vision. The, the visions are uh, significantly fogged up, um, as opposed to fucked up, fogged up. Um, the, um, he really loved what he was doing, so he was kind of, you know, the places where he wasn't good at, he was willing to spend the time to, to know about it. The um, well, I, I don't agree with that. Well, no, I'm not disagreeing with you, Stan, but I, I don't agree with uh, um, making your short suits better because my experience has been that um, you, uh, the, um, to emphasize what you're good at and get better at it as opposed to trying to take something that you're not worth a shit at. The only exception to that is communication. You've all got to get better at communication uh, because communication, uh, just like you only have one time to make a first impression with what you look like, you've only got one time to make a first impression when you open your big fucking mouth. And most of you, your communication skills uh, lack. Not just this group or the YouTube or in general. They lack, especially now, because you do everything via the net. And the kids, uh, especially, that have grown up with the, the net as a, a tool, uh, can't communicate uh, very well. And um, the uh, back to Steve. Okay, he's passionate. He's energetic. What else? He's got extraordinary uh, sales skills and extraordinary leadership skills. Yes, sir. In the corner. No. Uh, I love that he spoke about the two most important skills for a business starting out were recruitment and people and their ability to deal with people and finance and numbers. They were like the two things that he mentioned. If you're starting out, what do you need to be really fucking good at? And they're the things that I struggled at and still kind of suck at. Yeah. Um, he didn't really know how to do anything that's related to the product in the hockey code or anything. Amen. And you guys want to know all about. You want to know the intricacies. And in my judgment, my experience over almost 50 years tells me the reason why you want to know about the intricacies is because you want to postpone pulling the trigger. You want to postpone taking action. And so what you do is, like the kid that read 700 books, and the, the fact that you know about all these things, about um, the various uh, personal development speakers. But as I told one or two of you so far, the, the extra information that I gave you that look, sound, looked like revelations to you in your eyes when I told you about some of the guys it's all on, the, uh, on Google, but it's on the 10th, 12th, 15th, 20th page of Google. And nobody goes past maybe the second page of Google. All that information's there. Has anybody, ever, well, very few of you have ever been to the 20th page on anybody in Google. Because it takes more time, and I'm not suggesting you start going to the 20th page. That's not the, uh, the point of this exercise. <coughs> But getting back to Steve, he didn't know the intricacies of the products that he uh, had been responsible for while he was at uh, Microsoft CEO. You 
probably know more about the Microsoft products than he does. Yeah. Oh, um. uh, what? <laughs> oh, you, I thought you wanted to say something. No, I did, but the last thing that you just said put me on a whole other thing. Okay, okay. Yeah. I wanted to say, he was so high energy and came across as nice in that interview, but made me think what an arsehole he must be behind closed doors. Yeah, well, you saw the stuff about the lawsuit. That's just one lawsuit. <laughs> um, I mean, he's, uh, he's an extremely uh, aggressive guy. But all those guys, I mean, the stories are legendary about Steve Jobs throwing computers at people, um, attempting to throw people out windows. And I mean, in today's world, of course, back in the day he was doing that, it wasn't the PC world, politically correct world. It was the, um, the old-fashioned world. And the, um, there's, but there's a lot of CEOs that exist, um, existed back when I was a CEO of a public company that couldn't exist. In fact, they, they told me that I got out at the cusp, right at the right time, of being the CEO of a, a big public company um, because of the, the way I, my leadership skills, uh, or uh, how I enacted my leadership skills, I should say, um, because I was very forceful. It was either my motherfucking way or the highway. There's a right way, a wrong way, and a Zeman's way. You know? There's a right way, a wrong way, and a Procter & Gamble way. We don't do it this way at Procter & Gamble. Next, and, and we don't do it this way at Ford. Next, and um, so, um, uh, you know, I, I slipped out like a thief in the night just in time. I'm sure I would have gotten in a lot of trouble. I got a lot of trouble anyway, but I mean, I'm sure I would have gotten in even more trouble. Okay, yeah. Uh, Steve judged himself as a CEO based on his ability to get Microsoft employees to work harder than any of the competitors. So if these employees were there late on a Saturday night, it was like, fuck yeah, I'm doing my job. Where can I ask versus a competitor if they're not there? Yeah, yeah. And it's not dissimilar to what, when Musk says, you know, why do you need to go see your daughter born? Why aren't there more people here on the weekend? You can take all the time off you need when we go bankrupt, et cetera, et cetera. And I can relate to all those. I can relate to all those. And, the, uh, um, and when you feel uh, part, uh, as part of the solution, and not uh, part of the problems or challenges, um, and because you own share stocks uh, uh, in your companies, as um, I explained to you that uh, Microsoft and a number of the, not a number, almost all the companies, like Starbucks, all uh, the, uh, down to the baristas, down to the janitors, they have ownership. <clears throat> it's easy to see, because you, you relate uh, directly to the success. And when Microsoft was a high flyer, um, I mean, the, the employees uh, took great pride. I'm not saying they don't take great pride in now. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. But I mean, they took uh, even more pride. Um, and um, that was ex exemplified in the um, public offering of uh, Facebook a couple years ago, uh, when the, there was a secondary market in Facebook shares before it went public. People were buying m one and two million dollar homes in Silicon Valley uh, pledging their Facebook shares, which had no liquidity, they weren't public, um, uh, to buy houses. And that's part of the reason that the um, uh, property values in Silicon Valley have gone through the fucking roof, because of, uh, not, not just because of Facebook, because a lot of the Silicon Valley uh, companies, um, the kids have gotten to be multi, multi-millionaires uh, by their uh, share ownership. But Steve's a classic example of uh, a super alpha male um, leader. And it, normally, nobody in the seminar can relate personally. So it's not, not just you. Once in a while, we, we get somebody that um, can. Now, I can relate uh, easily. Um, and the fact that he didn't use any bad words for the, you know, which he, um, Normally laces his speeches with yes, sir. You tell at the start of the speech, he went to say fuck yeah. at one point, and then you <clears throat> yeah. Refrain. Believe me, yeah. I've been there. I've been there, and I'm very proud. When I was at Oxford, I would say fuck twice. But it's interesting. 
the, when I've been turned down by some of the big universities, that's where they hone in on. That's where they hone in on. And I say, fuck, about two-thirds through. And so they got to, somebody listened to it to that point. But then, they, you know, they're not interested. And I don't understand, or I do, intellectually, how the message can be blurred so just because I said fuck twice in an hour and 40 minutes. I know you said it had something else. Yeah, so you spoke about hitting the weights room, i.e. when the business gets to a point where things are going well, that doesn't mean you just chill out. That's when you train hard. That's when you put in the extra effort to innovating new products and paving the way for the future. You don't just allow yourself to be comfortable with the success you've had. You drive it hard to stay ahead of the competitors. Yes, and <clears throat> he, he from Microsoft and, and the guys at uh, Apple and those companies, uh, Microsystems, they're all very competitive, you know, and um, and that's a good thing. Yeah. One trick pony versus being a three trick pony. I mean, that really fascinated me because sometimes you just get the one product and that's all you focus on, and you just get so excited about that that you know you need to be thinking about the second and the third. <clears throat> in, um, in manufacturing um, in products, they normally have um, five to ten derivative products on, on the shelves that they can come out with. Um, if they've got uh, a dandruff soap, they've got dandruff two, three, four, five, and then the dandruff soap also doesn't uh, make the end split. And they've got all these derivative products, and they, but what I see the uh, e-commerce kids do is they get one thing that creates a lot of traffic and hopefully conversions, et cetera, and sales, and they're not creating anything else until that product dies. And then they get hot in pursuit of something else instead of continuing to, um, to keep the momentum by creating new stuff. And that's why the, uh, the, the kids that are the hot shots on e-commerce today aren't for the most part, the kids that were the hot shots five years ago. Yeah. Oh, uh, he thought that clever people usually very pessimistic, but in case you want to make your company successful, you need to be optimistic. Well, yeah. <clears throat> now, President Trump is out optimistic, and again, I'm not agreeing with everything he says, but he is a a, um, a premier optimist, and um, most of the guys are also big exaggerators myself included, I exaggerate to make, to emphasize a point, you know, it's fucking the greatest thing that, you know, well, one, I'm emphasizing with a bad word, expletive, and two, uh, who's going to determine whether it's the fucking greatest or not, you know, the, um, but one of the words that you kids use a lot, when I say kids, you use awesome and um, epic and words like that, and if you look in the direct dictionary, what you guys are doing is not awesome. It's not fucking epic by any stretch of the imagination. Now, epic is when they dropped the fucking atomic bomb on Hiroshima. That was motherfucking epic. Okay? Now, some people would say that was also awesome because it ended the war uh, and the reason why that they developed that uh, weapon of mass destruction is so we wouldn't lose, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people having to invade uh, Japan with boots on the ground. But, uh, and I know why you use epic, I know why you use awesome, and, but I mean, in, in the scheme of things, remember, in cosmos of time, not a fart in the wind, you know, the, um, the, um, it, when, if and when they announce the cure of cancer, which I believe, is not, we already got one, but if and when we announce that, that's a big deal, you know, that's a big deal. Um, but, um, the, uh, but they exaggerate. Uh, and um, they're energetic, and uh, they don't take no for an answer. Going back to the Steve Jobs movie, when they were telling them they couldn't uh, do this at the, in the launching back in 84, I guess it was, he said he wasn't interested in the facts. And uh, these guys, the founders of these great companies and the leaders of these great companies, aren't, never get confused by the facts. And as I've told you, I, I don't get confused by the facts. I may be wrong, but I'm never in fucking doubt. And these guys... They all, while they don't say that, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm never in doubt, um, they act it. They act it. And because they have high self-esteem, they ha have high self-worth, 
and they got a lot of fucking confidence. And the more you're right, the more confidence you have. The more you're right, the more confidence you have. And the, um, I said, uh, I don't know, the second day maybe it was, I'm bloody fucking flabbergasted when something goes wrong with me, for me. I'm fucking gobsmacked, to use a British term. What the fuck? Because I'm used to success. And unfortunately, being used to success becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, and being used to failure, unfortunately, becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, but, excuse me, back in the day when Dallas Cowboys were called the American team or whatever they were called, and, uh, and Coach Landry was there, they, they were bloody, the, 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 the Dallas fans or the worldwide fans were fucking shocked when the Cowboys lost. Yeah, Doc. So you said you're golf smashed, right? Something gets wrong, goes wrong. Correct. How do you approach that to avoid that it doesn't happen a second time? How do you get out the best of it to... Oh, well, okay. <clears throat> when, when an acquisition falls to shit, you know, after you've done everything humanly possible to resurrect it and blow life back into the baby, uh, even if... Uh, uh, I could normally resurrect things uh, even in the first stages of rigor mortis. I can, I can save it, Okay. But you go back then, okay, what do we do right on this deal? What do we do wrong? And we analyze, and we have a, a meeting of the people that were involved in the transaction or the happening of whatever happened, and find out how it went wrong, what went wrong. And uh, not to point at individuals. And, of course, when you have those meetings, everybody is you know, apprehensive, scared shitless, because you know, what if we ascertain that it was you, you, and you that fucked this thing up? That's not why we're doing it. Uh, we're doing it so we don't make the same mistake again. Because making mistakes, everybody makes mistakes. But making the, second, the same mistake again, you know, is not necessary. It doesn't have to, you know. The same thing in, 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 uh, in, in combat situations. They always have after-action reports. Most of you kids don't have, have never experienced an after-action report. When you do something right, you don't, you don't even know why it went fucking right. And rarely, when something goes wrong, you don't know why it went wrong. I mean, the professionals want to know why it went right. Could we have made it more right? And why did it go wrong? So we avoid it. Uh, after action report. Um, and the, um, and, but you have to make the team understand we're not pointing fingers of indignation to blame. You know, one of my favorite sayings is, if we were at war, we'd be all fucking dead. You know, you're not a, a lot of the mistakes that I see made by not just you, but all the kids that have come through in 24 years, if we were in a combat situation, we would be dead. Now, if we were in a combat situation and you know you're going to be dead, you'd make less mistakes. But the key is less mistakes, not through less action. Because then if you take less action and then you don't get anything done, and then you're not pulling the trigger. So you have to understand that you, you're, 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 you're learning from your past mistakes, but you're also learning from your past successes so you can make your successes more successful. Uh, so to get back to your question, you want to understand why the thing didn't happen, why the thing didn't happen. And normally, you can, it, it comes down to one or two or three things. And normally, the biggest thing is piss poor communication. The, the party on the one side thought one thing, and you were saying one thing, and you were not clear. You may be clear to your own group, but you weren't clear enough for the people that you were uh, talking to. Thanks, YouTube.